Fourth and foremost, a seka ala ya awa ba shem ya washai ba shem rakakwadash. I say shalom to all our returning subscribers and to all our new subscribers. I say big shalom to you. And if you find this uh, our program, our teaching interesting, you can even share it also. Okay, it costs nothing. Just share and like. Okay, so because freely have I given, this is what Christ, the Black Messiah, says, and freely shall we give. And he said one thing again, he said, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. The question is, how many people want to know the truth? Because everybody now, they have their own truth. But to know the truth, we have to go into the word of God. And as we always say from the beginning and inception of this uh, platform, we always say that the Bible is not a religious book. It's not books for Christians or Christianity. It's not the book for everybody on the planet. Holy Bible, before they call it Holy Bible, it used to be called the book of instruction by our ancestors. Not on the, until 70 AD, when we lost Jerusalem to the Ro Europeans, the Romans, when they stole, stole our artifacts and everything, our writings, then in 325 AD, this is when the world, they compiled all the words, our writing, and put their own image. Okay, everything is scriptural. Okay, now today we'll be going into the topic, Judah and Ephraim, Yorubas. Because I've been watching so many YouTube videos. Some say, okay, the Yorubas are from the tribe of, of uh, Ephraim. Okay, I know there's some uh, uh, people who have Ephraimite among the Yorubas, but the original Yorubas are the Judah. And some people do say uh, the Yoruba, they are from Yoruba. No, 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 no. Yoruba is not from Yoruba. Okay? So, but we did some teaching before, uh, which uh, YouTube took that. But after it, we still did something around this year. That was uh, the origin of the Yoruba is Jerusalem and not Elaith. So we made mention of something about the, how it came, uh, we came as Yoruba. Because Yoruba is coming from Gideon. Okay? Forget whether Gideon is uh, a man of Manasseh. This is not how we trace who the Yoruba uh, to say whether Yoruba from the tribe of Anessa. No. Okay. Gideon name was changed to Yoruba. Okay. However, that sort of Gideon is very important. This is what will lead us to the book of Genesis, chapter 40, verse 10. Because there are three branches. These branches can be in any tribe, they can be in any other races on the planet. Okay, that is Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Okay, when we have that understanding, then we will understand why the Yorubas are Judah. Okay, so now, Ezekiel 37, verse 16. Moreover, thou son of man, take the one stick and write upon it, for Judah and for the children of Israel, his companions. Then take another stick and write upon it, for Joseph, the stick of Ephraim, see, the stick of Ephraim, and for all the house of Israel, his companions. There's a reason why the most I told Ezekiel to do this. Because King Solomon, he went off at a certain time, and most I told him, okay, yeah, when he's gone, the most I is going to divide the kingdom because of his sin. So this is why the kingdom of Israel was divided, divided into the two, Southern kingdom and the Northern kingdom. Because for Joseph's sake, this is why the Northern kingdom, Ephraim is the heir. And for the Southern kingdom, Judah is the heir, which comprises of Judah, Levite, and Benjamin. So the rest tribe, yeah, with Ephraim, the Northern Kingdom. Okay. 
So today we'll be talking about four points topic, four points topics. What why Judah and Ephraim are always twined together. Two, David is son of Ephrata, and the diff and the difference from Ephraimite. Because some uh, YouTube video I listen to, they confuse uh, they get confused of Ephrata and Ephraimite. They're two different people, okay, from Two, uh, two different tribes. The two most powerful thrones in the Yoruba land with their biblical connections, the Alafia of Hoyo and the Honor of Ife. For Judah will always sit on the, to rule the kingdom of Yahweh, God on earth. Okay? So we're going to go into these four topics. So let's dive into the ocean. Why Judah and Ephraim are twined together? First, to understand why Judah and Ephraim are always twined together, we need to understand the soul tie in the spirit realm and their position in the spirit realm as well before coming here on this earth to perform the task of the Almighty God. Yeah, our. So let's start with the book of Genesis. We start from the book of Genesis. Genesis. Genesis chapter 4. Verse 1 to 2. Genesis chapter 4, verse 1. And Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived and bare king, and said, I have gotten a man from God. And verse 2, and she again bear his brother Abel. And Abel was a keeper of sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. You see, so these two verses we read has given us insight of a lot of things. Okay, now, verse 2, and, and she said, and she again bear his brother Abel. They were twins. The first one that came out was Cain. And the second was one that came out was Abel. Okay? And she bear, and she bear again his brother Abel. And Abel was a keeper of sheep. But Cain was a tiller of the ground. Keeper of sheep is someone who is going to his priesthood, keeping the household of God. This is why Christ said, My sheep hear my voice. Okay? But Cain was a tiller of the ground. Cain is just someone who is meant to serve. Okay? Not to serve God, but to serve what? Uh, to till the ground. Okay? So, now, we see that we took, we have to take, in this verse, we take note of the soul of Adam and Abel. I didn't talk much about Cain. Because Cain is the reincarnated soul of who, of who they call Esau, the super white people today. But I won't go into that. I'm just going to concentrate on Adam and Abel. Okay? Adam and Abel. Adam, the first man. Let's go to Jeremiah 14. will tell us why Adam is the first man. Jeremiah chapter 14 and verse 2. Judah morning. Wow. He said, Judah morning. And the gay jar of language, they are black onto the ground, and the cry of Jerusalem is gone. You see, Judah is the fourth son of Jacob. The why is it that uh, uh, most have put it in the spirit of Jeremiah to say Judah is mourning? Okay? So, because Judah was the first soul that was created, then, as in when he came as Adam. Okay? About his reincarnation or regenerated was when he came again as Judah. In another dispensation, you have to get this clear. Okay? Okay? Judah mourned and the gates there of language, they are black onto the ground. So let's see why that doesn't say they are black onto the ground. 
Genesis chapter 2 and verse 7. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground. Who was the first man that God uh, created? It was Adam. Okay? And this by Genesis 2, and the Lord God formed Adam of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostril the breath of life, and man became a living soul. So this by Jeremiah 14, 2 was letting us know Jeremiah 14, verse 2, made us to understand, said, Judah mourning, and the gate they are of language, they were, you know, they are black onto the ground. Okay? So the Judah is the key soul that he's talking there. Okay? His soul is different from the soul of Ephraim. Okay? But now, let's still go on, because we see, we'll go to the soul of uh, Abel later, which will tie us to the soul of Ephraim. Uh, let's go to First Corinthians. First Corinthians chapter fifteen, verse forty-five. And so it is written: the first man, so it is written: the first man had them was made a living soul. The last Adam was made a quickened spirit. Who is the last Adam? That is Christ, the Howard He is the one that came to change. Okay? Okay? The teachers, the law, okay, and died and, and resurrected. Isaiah chapter 40 Isaiah chapter 40 from verse 10. Behold, the Lord God will come with strong hand, and his arm shall rule for him. No one has ever seen God at any time. And then with the right hand of God Almighty is Yahweh Shai. Behold, the Lord God will come with his strong hand, and his arm shall rule for him. Behold, his reward is with him, and his work with, for him. He shall feed the flock. You know, because... This is why I wrote, it's very important, the, uh, the flock. Because Adam is the one that has to feed his children. And Abel is one of his children that will carry on the priesthood, which Cain killed. Okay? He shall feed his flock like a shepherd. He shall gather the lambs with his arm and carry them in his bosom and shall gently lead those that are with, are with young. So, so we see uh, the work of Adam that was passed down to Abel, okay, to save the land of the Most High God, the children of Israel, okay. So Abel was a keeper of sheep or flock. So sheep of you no know, is a flock. So let's go to the book of Genesis, because if we understand Genesis very well. We know it gives insight of every other verses and chapters in the Bible. Okay? Genesis chapter 37, verse 2. These are the generations of jo Jacob. Joseph being 17. Why is it these are the generations of Jacob? And he just jumped to Joseph. We know that Reuben was the firstborn of what? Of Jacob. But the scripture just joined to Joseph. Genesis 37, verse 2. These are the generations of Jacob. Joseph, being 17 years old, Joseph there made us to know that the same soul of Joseph is Jacob. And what is the work of Joseph? Being 17 years old, was feeding the flock. What is the job of Abel? He was the keeper of the flock, the sheep. So that same Jacob is the reincarnated soul. Uh, it was that soul of Abel. They say, because we came in different dispensations. These are the generation of Jacob. Joseph, being 17 years old, was feeding the flock with his brethren. And the lad was with the sons of the lamb and with the sons of Silpah. 
his father's wives, and Joseph brought unto his fathers their evil report. Verse 3. Now Israel loved Joseph. Now we see, now because we know the name of Jacob was changed to Israel. Now the scripture now tells us that. Now Israel loved Joseph. This is why we have Ephraim. Because the blessing of Joseph was part of the Ephraim. Okay? And that sort of Judah is the same sort of Adam. You see? This is why Judah and Ephraim, they're always fine together. The one is having superior power over one, the other, which is Judah. Okay? Now Israel loved Joseph. Okay? Now we see that he, Jacob loved Joseph out of all his children. Now, Israel loved Joseph more than all his children because he was the son of his old age. And he made him a coat of many colors. Uh, that coat of many colors, when we go to Revelation chapter 4, it signified the rainbow. That is where I can remember. Get the scripture. Let me start from Revelation chapter 4. Verse, verse. Let me start from verse 1. The key point is verse 3. And this I looked, and behold, the door was opened in heaven. And the first voice which I heard was I, as it were of a trumpet talking with me, which said, Come up either, and I will show the things with. Bear with me. Sorry, sorry, I had to dislodge that, that phone call. Okay, yeah. Revelation chapter 4, because we want to understand Judah, okay? The soul of that soul, who is Judah? So Revelation 4, see, give us more understanding. After the Revelation chapter 4, verse 1, after this I looked, and behold, the door was opened in heaven, and the first voice which I heard was as it were of the trumpet, talking with me, which said, come up either, and I will show the things which must be here after. And immediately I was in the spirit, and behold, the throne was set in heaven, and one sat on the throne. One sat on the throne. And he that sat was to look upon like jasper and a sardine stone. So now, when we go into the book of Exodus chapter 28, jasper is the stone of Benjamin. Okay? And sardine is the stone of what? Reuben, they forget about the name yet, but we are talking about the position, the first and the last. Okay? And there was a rainbow round about. Why that rainbow? That rainbow is the word, the coat of many colors that Jacob gave to Joseph. Okay? Okay? And there was a rainbow round about the truth in the sight, like on emerald. Why does it say emerald? When we go to Exodus chapter 28 about stone, emerald, who is having this stone emerald, is Judah. You see? So we see the connection because some people do say, okay, yeah, yeah, Ephraim ruler with Judah. Okay, yeah. But the main ruler is Judah. Okay? Okay. And round about the throne, we have four and twenty seats. And upon the seat, I saw four and twenty elders seated floated in white raiment, and they had on their heads crown of gold. This one is going to the book of Leviticus. These are Levite priests. When we go to the book of uh, wow. first, first Chronicles chapter 23 and chapter 24, we give us the breakdown of this. So we won't go there to that one now. Okay? So, so still on Abel. We, now let's go to the book of First Chronicles chapter 5. 
First Chronicles. First Chronicles chapter 5, verse 1 to 2. Now the sons of Reuben, the firstborn of Israel, for he was the firstborn, for, but for as much as he defied his father's dead, his birth cry was given unto the sons of Joseph, the son of Israel, which is Jacob. And the genealogy is not to be reckoned of that birth cry. Number verse 2. For Judah prevailed above his brethren. You see, this is why we see uh, in the book of uh, the Revelation chapter 5. The lion of the tribe of Judah was the one that was able to open the seal. Ephraim cannot. Okay? Ephraim cannot because Judah is that soul of who they call, who came as Christ, Yahweh Shah, of our Adam. And is that the word of God by if everything was created? For Judah prevailed above his brethren, and of him came the chief ruler. For the best right was Joseph. So this is why the Joseph was invited, was given to Joseph, and was passed out to Ephraim. Okay? Let's go to 1 Samuel. 1 Samuel, chapter 16, and verse 19. Where four saw sent messengers unto Jesse, and said, Send me David thy son, which is with the sheep. Well, we see, now David comes in. Who, which is with the sheep. David was king over Israel. Israel, right? So David is that same sort of Abel in another dispensation. We can go on and on. So let's go to First Peter. First Peter chapter five and verse two. Feed the flock of God which is among you, taking the oversight thereof, not by constraint, but willingly, not for filthy local, but of a ready mind. Neither has been Lord over God's heritage, but been example to the flock. And when the chief shepherd shall appear, will the chief shepherd Jehovah shall he shall receive a crown of glory that faded not away. Okay? Because it passed what? The, the bat to what? Uh, 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 the rulership to what? To Peter. To feed the flock. So Peter, so he said that same sort of in David, Abia, Joseph. Ephraim. We can go on and on. So now let me, I will read one of these additional scripture below. We go to book of Zechariah 9. Because why is always Judah and Ephraim together? You know, though they are from different tribes, Zephaniah, Zechariah, Zechariah chapter 9. When I have benched Judah, this is what is going in these last days, going to the race war. When I have benched Judah for me, fill the bow with Ephraim. Okay? When I have benched Judah, you have to bench the bow uh, and fill the bow with Ephraim. Then Ephraim became the arrow. You see, the two are warriors, man. But Judah is the chief warrior. Okay? And when I have benched, uh, when I have benched Judah, for me, turn Judah to what? Uh, into a weapon of war. Fill the bow with Ephraim and raise up thy sons, O Zion, okay, against the sons of Greece. The what? The, the uh, civilization of the so called white people started with war with the Greece. This is what is about to happen any moment from now. There's going to be a race war. But now the black people are still are sleeping. No, they're still running to Europe. I'm coming to Europe. I'm coming to United Kingdom, okay, not knowing that. The white man is the devil that is destroying you. He's already at war with the children of Israel. For centuries, for ages, you know, that now the Messiah is about to reveal him that he is the, what? the chief 
enemy of the so-called black race, the children of Israel. So this is why God said, when he has made Judah ready and Ephraim together, then this is when they're going to destroy Esau, the so-called white race, through the power of Mr. Yahabashi. Okay, that's it. you can read the additional uh, picture also. So now there's another one they say David. The, uh, David is a, it, some people say David is an Ephraimite. But David is an Ephraimite. It's two different things. Some do make great mistakes by comparing Ephraimite and Ephraimite. These two are of different tribe of Israel. And Ephraimite is a descendant of Judah and Ephraimite a descendant of Joseph. First Chronicles chapter 4, verse 1. The sons of Judah, you see, the started sons of Judah, Hiras, Ezron, and Kami, and Ur, and Shuba, and Penuel, the father of Edo, and Ezra, the father of Usha. These are the sons of Ur, the firstborn of Ephrath. So I just jumped to. Uh, Chapter four, verse four, you know, okay. You see, uh, these are the sons of Er. The Er of one of the sons of Judah, his name is Er, or his grandson, was the firstborn of Ephrata, the father of Bethlehem. So we have to know the origin of Ephrata and the origin of Ephraimites or Ephraim. Okay, so uh, even let me go. Let me read another scripture about Ephraim. It will be in the book of Genesis, chapter 48. Okay, let me just go to the book of Genesis 46, 20. And unto Joseph in the land of Egypt we were born Manasseh and Ephraim. Okay? So, Ephraim is one of the sons of Joseph, the grandson of Jacob. So now, let's just buttress more on if, uh, uh, Ephrata. Ephrata is different from Ephraim. Okay? Let's go to the book of uh, Ruth. The book of Ruth, chapter 4, and verse 16. No, because this one will take us to the uh, lineage of King David. And Naomi took the child and laid it in a bosom and became not unto it. And the woman and neighbors gave it a name, saying, Here is a son born to Naomi. And they called his name Obed. He is the father of Jesse, the father of David. Now, these are the generation of Perez. Where we say Perez, son of Judah. Perez begat Ezra, and Ezra begat Ram, and Ram begat Aminadab. And Aminada begat Nashon, and Nashon begat Salmon, and Salmon begat Boaz, and Boaz begat, begat Obed, and Obed begat Jesse, and Jesse begat David. From there again, let's go to the first chronicles, because we have to prove everything according to the scriptures. Okay, first chronicles. First chronicles, chapter 28, and verse uh, 4 to 5. Oh, yeah. How be it the Lord God of Israel chose me before all the house of my father to be king over Israel forever. For he has chosen Judah. When he say forever, King David did not live forever. But he's saying even when the kingdom of God is reinstalled back on the earth, Judah will still be the ruling power, not Ephraim. Okay? How be it the Lord God of Israel chose me before all the house of my father to be king over Israel forever. For he has chosen Judah to be the ruler, and of the house of Judah, the house of my father. And, and among the house of my father, he liked me to make me king over all Israel. And of all my sons, for the Lord has given me many sons, he has chosen Solomon, my son, to sit upon the throne of the, of, of the kingdom of the power of Israel. So we know King Solomon also uh, never lived forever. Yeah? So let's go to the book of Micah. Book of Micah, chapter 5, verse 2. 
But thou Bethlehem Ephrata. Why didn't he say thou Bethlehem Ephraimite? But thou Bethlehem Ephrata. Though thou be little among the thousands of Judah. Why didn't he say among the thousands of uh, Ephraimite? Among the thousands of Judah. Yet out of thee shall he come forth unto me. That is to be ruler in Israel. Who's going for whose goings forth have been from of old from everlasting? Why does he say from old from everlasting? We start from Adam. You see, from everlasting, even in the kingdom of God. This is why we read the book, we go to the book of Revelation. Okay, this is why I said from everlasting, from the beginning. That is that soul of who they call uh, Jesus, Yahweh Let's go to the book of John. The book of John, chapter 7, and verse 40 to 43. Many of the Jews, therefore, when they heard this saying, said, Oh, of a truth, this is the prophet. Others said, This is the Christ. But some said, Shall Christ come out of Galilee? Galilee. Had not the scripture said that Christ cometh of the seed of David? Okay? That Christ will come from the seed of David. And out of the town of Bethlehem, where David was. Okay? So there was a division among the people because of it. You see, this part of what is still going on today that is clean, clear in the scripture for us to understand, okay, which tribe David is coming from, which tribe Joseph is coming from. However, when we want to understand the soul of Joseph, of, uh, uh, of Judah and Joseph, then we have to go to Genesis, the soul of Hadam and the soul of Abel. Now we go to the two powerful thrones in Yorubala. And how this throne is attached to what? To the Holy Bible. Okay, the most powerful royal thrones in the Yoruba land are the Alafi of Oyo and Oni of Ife. The Alafi of Oyo is that throne of Judah. And one of the titles of, of anyone that sits on the throne is Iku Babaye, one who overcame death. You see, one who overcame death, Iku Babaye. Okay, let's go to the book of Job. Why I'm using Job? I just want to pick one word out today. Job chapter 18 and verse 13. Okay? He shall devour the strength of his skin. Even the firstborn of death shall devour his strength. So when they say the firstborn of death, Christ is the firstborn of death. Okay? Who resurrected on the third day? After he was crucified, Where that can have other scripture. Yeah, let me see. Uh, let me see. Uh, yeah, Revelation chapter one, verse five. And from and from Yahweh Shai, Amashia, who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead, and the prince of the kings of the earth, unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. So I'm not saying that uh, any of the uh, Alafion for you, okay, is uh, Yahweh Shai, okay, that is Christ. But I'm talking about that throne. Okay, it's the throne of the seat of Judah. Okay, that is the seat of Judah. Okay, however, whosoever is ruling there now, sitting there, is, I'm not saying it's the soul of Yahweh Shai. But what the clue I can give us, that is uh, the person that sat there, that was the soul of Yahweh Shai, was uh, Allah Pishongo. Because he was having the characteristic of, some of the characteristic of Yahweh Shai. You know, we did a video about Shango, okay? When he speaks, you know, 
he speaks he speak with the fire coming out of his mouth, you know, because that is one I can say is close to. Okay, but he didn't come to show all his power. Okay, so uh, we and we have uh, the firstborn of death is Yahweh Shah, which is a Lord of Christ. We can read the book of Matthew, chapter 27, 53 to 54, the book of John 11, 24 to 26. You know, so the book of Acts, chapter 2, 31 to 32. But let me read this from the book of Acts, chapter 26 to 23. That Christ, Yahweh, shall should suffer, and that he should be the first that should rise, raise from the dead, and should show light unto the people and to the Gentiles. He defeated them. Okay? That's it. Um, yeah, okay, before I go further, let me go see whether I can, we can get some articles. Because this was some article in Wikipedia. We have Oyo, Oyo State. Because we are the, uh, Alafi is ruling from, is ruling from Oyo State. The seat of the rulers of Oyo, their territory, the constituent Rome, Rome, Rome State, is located in contemporary Nigeria. Since this 1900 political absorption into southern Nigeria, of, of the kingdom that it that it once served as the metropolitan once served as metropolitan center, the traditional monarch. A monarch is a form of government. Okay, which is person the monarch is head of state for life or until abdiction. So while this is a form of government, at the throne of Oyo, okay, Oyo means. Okay, is what is executive and legislative. Okay, which is the political power of what? Allah. Okay, this is why Judah is what is the lawgiver. We have to understand all this. But if we don't understand it, this is why we miss the what? The uh, the holy scriptures. But the far on the left hand side cannot bring all this one clear to the people. Though there are two thrones in uh, in uh, Oyo and whether Oyo or what is it called, or Oshun State now, we are uh, Ilefe East, okay? But before it was one big state, before, before it was divided, okay? But the Alafi in Oyo, they are what to make the law, the rules, okay? This is where we have Are or Nokaka, you see? I'm not talking about the Ariel no Kakafu here today because those are warriors. Okay. Um, you can see ten in 1300 foundation of your empire, empire in 1200. 1210. 12, On Ranya, they say it's a lot. They say grandson of Samse, son of Udua, founder of the second Ife dynasty, and ancestor of most kings, Yoruba land. Okay? I, ca I can't argue it for now, but I know when we go into the scripture, we can get better understanding. Okay? But what is, uh, I want to talk is about the Shango Alaf. This Shango is the Alaf in Shango. Okay? This is the beginning of when they talk about God of Shango. God of son, son of thunder of what? Okay. It's an Orisha in Yoruba religion, genealogically speaking. Shango is the royal ancestor of the Yoruba. He was the third Allah of the of your king prior to his situation. However, there is one other thing I found out. They said Shango was the fourth king that ruled as the Allah of your. So there is a it's contradicting. But if I want to say, okay, yeah, he's the fourth king. What is the position of Judah from the children of Israel? Judah is in the fourth position. We have Reuben, we have Simeon, we have uh, Levi, then we have Judah. Even in the kingdom of God, in the book of Revelation, chapter 21, when we go to the foundation of the kingdom of God, Judah is all the fourth position because it's meant to rule, to give the law. 
Okay, let's go back to you. So now we see, when we say the Alakim for you is that throne of Judah, and one of the titles of anyone that sits on that throne is Ikubab Aye, which is saying, who, one who overcame death. Who is the only person that overcame death is Yahweh Shai, the black messiah, because that is his throne. That is the throne of who they call Jesus. He's a dark skinned man. They are not white. Okay? Now we go to the honor of Eve, Eve. This is the throne. This is the throne of the seed of Joseph that is in the hand of Ephraim. And Ile Ephraim means the house of Ephraim, which we can also be, also can be written this way in Yoruba phonetics. Ile Ephraim. 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 Okay? The house of Ephraim. This is what he's just telling us. Ile Ephraim. Ile the house of Ephraim. So, Let's go to you. Orni redirect here for the opening observatory network. Orni. The Orni of Ife is the traditional ruler of Ile Ife and the spiritual head of the Yoruba people. You see, he's a spiritual head. However, uh, the throne of Ile Ife to be the spiritual head of all the children of the uh, uh, Northern Kingdom. Because being the uh, house of Ephraim is separated from what? From the house of Judah. However, we both speak Yoruba. We are both the children of Jacob, Odudua. Okay, we did a video. Odudua is a title which was given, passed down to Jacob. Okay, the only dynasty, dynasty existed before the reign of Odudua, which is they always get confused with all those ones, which historians have argued to have been between the seventh to ninth centuries AD. After the demise of Odudua and Ogun loses of his throne, but ah. Uh, And Shango. There was a film I watched a few days ago. He gave a little clip, I can't remember, so I don't want to confuse people. Because it seems Ogun belongs to Ogun belongs to Ileif. And Shango belongs to Oyo Alafi. After the demise of Odudua and Ogun's thoughts of the throne. Odudua supports based this part of the of out of Ileife. Odudua support based this part out of Ileife. Another account, but not in the tandem with existing evidence, state that Ogun purposely sent all Odudua's children on different journeys to effect Yoruba religious function. When they say Ogun purposely sent all Odudua's children, all the Odudua children are what? The 12 tribes. When you talk Bini, it's Benanim, ben, 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 okay? The last one of one of, of the children of Jacob, okay? We have the, uh, the Ashanti in Ghana, Asha, the Awusas, the Naphtali, the Ijo, Gad, the Eagles. All of them, all are from the tribe, you know, the children of Odudua. Okay? The honor of Ife, this is the throne of the seed of Joseph, that is in the land of Ephraim. And Ile Ife means the house of Ephraim. We can also be written this way in Yoruba phonetic. Ile Ife or Ife. Okay? That is me, the house of Ephraim. The throne of Ile Ife is the spiritual throne of Joseph. And not a lawgiver. The lawgiver is only Allah in the throne of Allah, which is Judah. Which says, because when we go to the uh, Genesis, Genesis chapter 49, we see the blessing that the Jacob gave to Joseph from verse 22. 
Joseph is a fruitful bough, even a fruitful bough by a well, whose branch is run over the wall. The arches have sorely gripped him and shoot at him and hated him. But his bow abode in strength. Okay? His bow abode in strength. And the arms of his hand they are made strong by the hand of the mighty God of Jacob. From thence is the shepherd stone of Israel. Okay? Even by the God of thy father, who shall help thee, and by the Almighty, who shall bless thee with the blessings of heaven. Okay, blessings of heaven. This is why they say spiritual above blessings of the deep, the natural resources under the earth that lie under the blessings of the breast and of the womb. The blessings of their father have prevailed above the blessings of my progenitors unto the uttermost bound of the everlasting hills. They shall be on the head of Joseph and on the crown of the head of him that was separated from his brother. You see? So this is why, because the birthright was given to Joseph, not Reuben. So let's go to the book of Genesis 48, verse 17. And when Joseph saw that his father laid his right hand upon the head of Ephraim, okay, Ephraim, which is the house of Elay Ephraim, Elay Ephraim, Elay Ephraim, Elay Ephraim, it's not Elay Lemfe, okay, those are the lies that we're telling on if I were on the left hand side, okay. Then when and when Joseph saw that his father laid his right hand upon the head of Ephraim, it displeased him. And he held up his father's hand to remove it from Ephraim's head unto Manasseh's head. And Joseph said unto his father, Not so, my father, for this is the firstborn, who thy right hand upon his head. And his father refused and said, I know it, my son. I know it. He also shall become a people. He also shall be great. For truly, his younger brother shall be greater than he. You see? Who is the younger brother to Manasseh is Ephraim, and his seed shall become a multitude of nations, and he blessed them that day, saying, In thee shall Israel bless, saying, God make thee as Ephraim and as Manasseh, and he said Ephraim before Manasseh. Just the way the most I said in the book of First Chronicles, chapter 5, verse 1 to 2, that the most I said Joseph above all the children of Israel. Uh, concerning the birthright. But the rulership and the lawgiver was given to Judah because Judah is what is the soul of Adam, is the soul of the word who came out, who is the word of God, Yahweh. So let's read Psalm 60. Psalm 60, verse 7, Gilead is mine. When he said Gilead is mine, that is place of slavery where they sold Joseph. When he said Gilead is mine, he said Joseph is mine. Manasseh is mine, which is also the soul of Joseph. Ephraim is also uh, is the strength of my head. So you see, he said that Ephraim is also the strength of my head. Because when we go to the book of Genesis 20, 49, well, around 25 to 26, God is making us to know that the strength of the head of Joseph's crown. Okay? Ephraim also is the strength of my head. Judah is my lawgiver. So most I make everything clear. So when we read about the uh, Allah thing, you know, for you, they are what? They are more uh, monarch of ruling. Okay? Now, Judah the ordained to rule. After all said and done, Judah is the ruling house of Israel, the eight tribe of the twelve tribe. So after everything, it's Judah that will still rule. Genesis chapter 49, verse 8. Judah, thou art whom thy brethren shall praise, thy hand shall be in the neck of thy enemies. Thy father's children shall bow down for thee. Thy father's children shall bow down for thee. So at least Joseph also, or Ephraim, they are still what? The children of, of, of Jacob. But 
God is letting us to know that is just uh, Jacob, Judah, thou art in, at, at he whom thy brethren shall praise. Thy hand shall be in the neck of thy enemies. Thy father's children shall bow down before thee. So the Ephraim, they have to bow down to Allah, King of Oyo. Judah is a lion's whelp from the prey, my son. Thou art gone up, he stooped down, he couched as a lion and as an old lion. Who shall rouse him up? The scepter shall not depart from Judah. Okay, the ruling, the Okwa share, oh no, will never go away from Judah. Nor a law give up between his feet unto Shiloh come, and unto him shall be gathering of the people be. So if now God Almighty wants to gather all the children of Israel, we call ourselves different names, they give us different names, but we are living in the last days that God Almighty wants to gather us together. Okay, because Christ from the tribe of Judah is about to return. Okay, let's go from this uh, Psalm 78. Psalm 78 and verse 67. Moreover, he refused the tabernacle of Joseph and chose not the tribe of Ephraim. I will read it again. Psalm 78, verse 67. Moreover, he refused the tabernacle of Joseph. He re refused the what? The house of Joseph. And chose not the tribe of Ephraim. He didn't choose Elaphim, but he chose Alaphim of Oyo. But he chose the tribe of Judah, the Mount Zion, which he loved. And he built his sanctuary like high palaces, like, like the earth which he had established forever. He chose David. David is from the tribe of what? Judah. Also, he served and took him from his sheep, clothed, 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 fold. Uh, he took him from the sheep, fold. Okay? David is Abel. When we go to the first uh, slide, we show. So let's go to the first chronicle. First Chronicle chapter 29, verse 20. We read from 20 to 23. And David said to all the congregation, now bless Yahweh, your God, and all the congregation, bless the Lord God of their father, and bow down their heads and worship the Lord and King, and they, sac and they sacrifice unto the Lord, unto the Lord, and offer burnt offerings unto the Lord Yahweh. On the morrow after that day, even a thousand bullocks, a thousand rams, a thousand lambs, with their drink offering and sacrifice in abundance for Israel. And did eat and drink before Yahweh on that day with great gladness. And they made Solomon, the son of David, king the second time. Note, and they made Solomon, Solomon, the son of David, king the second time. When was it that they made King Solomon king the second time? This is just a uh, precursor of what is going to happen now because Christ, the son of Solomon, is the son of who they call is Judah, uh, Yahweh Shai, Christ that is coming back, that came to die on the cross, is coming to rule and sit on the throne of his father. Okay, everlasting throne. And they made Solomon the son of David king the second time and anointed him unto the Lord to be chief governor and Zedok to be priest. Then Solomon sat on the throne of the Lord as king instead of David his father and prospered and all Israel obeyed him. So now David now go to what? To Ephraim. Now Ephraim, David said have to bow down to Solomon. So we have to understand the scripture perfectly. Our praises to the Most High God. So from there, let's go to the book of Revelation. Revelation chapter 5 and verse 1. And I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book written, written and on the backside sealed with seven seals. And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, who is worthy to open the book and to lose the seals thereof. And no man in heaven 
nor in help. Neither under the earth was able to open the book, neither to look thereon. And I wept much because no man was found worthy to open and to read the book, neither to look thereon. And one of the elders said unto me, Weep not, behold the lion of the tribe of Judah. Who is that? Our child. That same soul as King Solomon. The root of David. Okay, why does it say the root of David? Because Christ was coming from the what? From the tribe of, from the tribe of Judah, which in David is coming from the tribe of Judah. Don't forget, I said something before about the three branches. In the book of Genesis, chapter 40, verse 10, that is the soul of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, when you hear the three branches. Okay, and these three branches can be in any tribes of the children of Israel. They can be in other people that they are not Israelite. Okay, most I can send them there to go and do a job. Okay, those are the three branches. So, and that's root of David, which is the same uh, reincarnated soul of who they call Ephraim, Joseph, Abel, okay, and to fail to open the book and to lose the seven seals thereof. Let's jump to verse 12. Saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb that was slain. Who was slain? Christ was slain on the cross to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. And every creature which is in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and such as I see and all that I have, head I hear, I say, Blessing and honor and glory and power be unto him that is seated upon the cross and unto the Lamb forever and ever. And the four beasts and said, Amen. And the four and twenty elders fell down and worshiped him that live there forever and ever. So, when I say, Kala Yaba Shemia Shai, Kala Wom, Alafia, Irio. So now we know that there's a difference between Ephrata and Ephraimite. Okay? And now we know that uh, the only of Ephraim throat is different from the throat of the uh, Alafia for you. Okay, but both of them have to be in the same land, in the same what city. There's still a lot of scriptures. Okay, when we go into the scripture, we see what happened in Jerusalem when we are living there. This is what most I replicate in West Africa. Here we fled. With that, I say, Shalom, Alafia, Okay, 